feels so different now. If it was 25 years ago... What, when I was, um, when I was two? <laughs> then I think that you would have been in a lot more danger in terms of what you ate. Because there's so much I more on the market now. Exactly. I used to just sit in my hobbity hole <laughs> and eat gruel. <laughs> <laughs> and now she eats gruel with kale. Yeah. Yeah, Kaylee Gruel. Kaylee Gruel. That, just, that sounds like the name of an Olympian, doesn't it? It does, I totally Coming agree. up to the blocks now, it's Kaylee Gruel. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richie, here we are at Camp Aspie Bend Olive Grove, and we thought, what better thing to make today than butterfly lamb? Mm. I mean, butterfly just look. Lego. Look at this. This time of year, mm. when you just want some warm comfort food, so we're going to have your butterfly lamb. Lego lamb, yep. With some absolutely gorgeous eggplant. Yep. Okay, so where's the lamb? All Are you right. going to do that first? I'm going to do that first. Okay. Well, I've only ever cooked lamb on the bone as mm. a leg of lamb. In this case, probably get your butcher to do it because it is quite difficult to go around all the corners of the bone. The point is to make it cook evenly on the barbecue. So are you saying that you can't do that with the bone in it? Well, it'll just cook faster. Like without the bone. Yeah. So then you've got the bone. Because it's quite thick, so the heat's got to penetrate that whole mass. When you've actually levelled it out, it'll cook on the barbecue more evenly. Right. Okay, so while you're doing that... If I you can start started. on the eggplant, okay, that would so be fantastic. I'm going to cut that in half. Now, some people would use a bigger knife. I'm not one of those people. Mm -hmm. There's an old saying, the way to a, a man's heart is through his stomach. And yes. some women would say it's through his... Um, his ribs with a sharp knife, but that's really not appropriate. No, so um, we're just going to cut through here. So while you're doing that, I'm going to start marinating the lamb. So I'm going to salt and pepper it, get some rosemary. I'm just going to break it up like that. Can you pass me the olive oil, please, Trace? Would you like the evu? Evu. Now, I used to see evu on menus, and I never knew what it was, and it's extra virgin olive oil. Oh, look yeah. at that colour. Yeah. That's beautiful. So put it all over the lamb and try to get it back in the bag. It smells fabulous. It does. OK, and the last thing we're going to add is some crushed garlic. So about, on a piece of lamb like that, maybe four cloves. Yeah. And what about hanging with the skin? Now, don't worry, you're marinating the lamb. If it goes on the barbecue, it just burns off. It doesn't matter. All right, then fine. Yeah. OK. All right. There we go. Yep. So, intermittently, if you've, like, marinated it for an hour or a day or whatever, just come back and just move everything around like that. Yeah, because they're yeah. having a little party in there. They're having a party. Yeah. Yeah. OK. All right, we'll put that over to there. All right. So, Rich, seeing you chop tomato so much better than me, can you continue doing that, yep. please? And I'll start doing the dressing. OK. OK, so... Um, I'm going to use some verjuice. I'm going to use half a cup of that. And then I'm putting in... Some of this can pass be bend. Evu. Evu. Extra virgin olive oil. And oh, look at that colour. I That's mean, that beautiful. really, that is pretty gorgeous, isn't it? And we're going to put something that I have every mm -hmm. single day, and that's apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And for centuries, people have been using this as a digestive aid. But it's got a beautiful it's flavour. Flavor. And yeah. what it does to, to the actual dressing is it provides that sort of, it just provides a little bit of sharpness mm. right at the end. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's really, really lovely. This one's 100% organic. Yes. So we're just going to splush it. Okay, that's a splush. That's a splush. Okay, it's a scientific measure. We're going to add splush. salt and pepper to this. Yes. Now, would you just chip that in like that? Yep. Just top, on top. On top. Okay, gorgeous. And the basil, I mean, they're companion plants, basil and tomato. They grow very happily together, and then you can use them happily together in the kitchen. And see what I would do here? Yep. All right. Look, I, look, I would do this. Do it. Do yeah, it. I'd be doing this. I really like to get my hands in to mix things up like that. And I think we can start to pull on the lamb. OK. So how long are you going to be cooking it for? It's about 15 or 20 minutes per side for this weight. OK. Come on. OK. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. wow. Woo! So how long will that take to cook? That meat will take about 15 or 20 minutes per side. OK, so what oh. about this? We leave that to cook. Mm -hmm. and we can go for a wander with Michael from Campaspe Bend, learn a bit of, uh, more about olives and olive oil. And in particular, I'd like to ask him one really important question. Why some olives are known as extra virgin and why others are a little more tawdry. <laughs> Want to come with me? Love to. Come on, let's go. <laughs> 
So, Rich, we've been prancing around Camp Aspie Bend as if we own the joint. And we've only just met the owner, Michael. <laughs> Thank you so much Tracy, for pleasure. letting us barge Michael, into your very property. Very nice to meet you, Richard. Yeah. What I'm an amazing... We, we are enjoying... It's an amazing property you've got here. Well, it's very interesting because uh, we had this idea it'd be nice to have an olive grove. OK. And so we had someone out who knew what they were doing. Well, don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> It's lovely. <laughs> this is the most shocking. Yeah. This is the most shocking taste. I know I'm alive now. <laughs> <laughs> the moment, as you can see, they've got plenty of fruit on them, but they're still not ready to harvest. When the fruit is green, like this, it's very hard. Try and squash it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very hard. I just tried to do it with my teeth. Yes, yeah. yes. Well. Okay. Oh, so you should be able to squash it with your finger? Yes. Now, I just happened to have passed a tree further back. Oh, how oh. amazing. Which, which, Isn't that amazing? <laughs> which, which is a little bright. Yes, imagine that. Earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and you watch when I squeeze this Go on, on there. Oh. <laughs> Now that, me. th that means those olives are ready to pick. OK. And if you could feel this, you'd feel it was very, very oily. Mm. Well, yeah, we can and, see. And, and that's what you're looking for. So now you need to tell me the difference between extra virgin olive oil and olive oil. Not on Saturday afternoon television, I won't, Michael. <laughs> You've got All to right. tell well, me. If you're too embarrassed. We don't know. We don't if know. you're too embarrassed to explain, <laughs> I will do All right, so. Then. All right. yes. OK, the difference is entirely to do with the acid content of the oil. Yep. So extra virgin olive oil is in general terms about less than 1% acid. Yep. Virgin olive oil is less than 2% acid. Uh-huh. And what is just termed olive oil is less than 3% acid. The olive oil that comes from these trees yep. is 0.1%. Ooh, Ooh, that must be really that? good. Very fine. Yes, it's, okay. a, it's a pretty good oil. It's oh. <laughs> After all, we did get a gold medal, you know. Oh, where? Yeah. Where did you get the gold medal? At the medal? Melbourne Fine Food Awards. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yes, it is, yeah. isn't it? Look at that. Oh, wow. That looks beautiful. That's yeah, give beautiful. it a good poke. OK. All right, I reckon that's done, Trace. Yep, OK. OK. All right, look yep. at that. Oh, wow. Oh, that is perfect. That looks absolutely perfect. So, what's, beautiful. what's the first step now? The first step now is I uh, get some capers. Now, are these baby capers? They're baby capers. Uh, you know, I've just got to say this. I think they've been taken away from their mothers too soon. Mm. OK, so just, just know that no... No capers were harmed in the making of this recipe, but I'm feeling for the baby capers. OK, so I'm going to chop some, but all not right, all. Oh, darling. Sorry. We're going to get some lemon rind. Mm -hmm. You mean some lemon zest? Um, lemon rind. What, all of it? Not, just some. Well, it's just the zest yeah. then. Yeah. The mm -hmm. rind's the whole thing. That's probably enough. And what I want to do is I want to actually add the lemon rind and the capers to the hot lamb so the oil will come out of the actual lemon rind. And while that rests, all those flavours will meet and melt together. So just spread it over. OK, so we've had the salt on the eggplant, so we just take that off. And you can see how the colour's changed. Yep. So that's the water that's left the eggplant. So then we'll get right. some more olive oil and we'll do some eggplant massage. When I was learning how to do massage mm. therapy, <laughs> I used to practise on eggplants. That's why she's doing food today. <laughs> But look, I think they deserve it. OK. And push them down. And then we'll leave them. Until yep. they get really nice colour. OK. Oh, oh, look at that. That is Fantastic. perfect. See that? Oh, it looks absolutely fabulous. Right. OK. Right. What I want to do now is I actually just want to grab the goat's cheese and break it in half. Okay. And we can crumble over the top. I am mad about goat's cheese. OK. OK, and what else have we got there? Buffalo mozzarella? Buffalo mozzarella. Yep. So half on each it's one. so great. Fabulous. Isn't it nice of buffaloes to lay these little things for mm. us? Who knew they could do that? I'm going to pop that last little bit on. OK. Now, I'm just going to spoon our marinated tomatoes over. Because the actual, probably the barbecue is probably dehydrated, the um, eggplant's just that little bit. You want to have all this beautiful juice soak in 
and probably finish off with just one more little bit of lemon. And then over we'll, this. we'll take it inside and sit around the, the table in Michael and Elizabeth's farmhouse at Campaspe Bend, where we've been here today. And we're going to share this, Richo, with, with them and there our gorgeous go. crew. Yeah. OK, well, All I'm right. going to take this. And you right. can take the lamb. If, right. if you go first, I could just drip it on. Oh, I've missed a bit here. OK. <laughs> Got some beautiful lamb. I'm starving. There you are. You get the best bits for you, Tracy. Thank you, lovely. Oh, that looks so beautiful. <laughs> well done. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Richard. One. I think Michael's wanting to get into more footage. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the camera loves you, Michael. Oh, I mean, can you help it if the ca if the camera loves you? Oh, that was so. Richard. We've just come back from Campaspe Bend and spending time with the lovely Michael using his gorgeous award-winning olive oil. And we're going to do a beautiful spinach pasta and finish it off with some sun-dried tomatoes and some dried olives. And we're going to do the whole thing in seven minutes. That's the challenge we've set ourselves as unprofessional cooks. So we've got this fabulous little timer that we keep fighting over, but I'll let you set it. Seven minutes and um, the bell should go off as we're plating up. That's the goal, OK? And uh, seven All minutes, right. we can just we're we going. Can plate it. OK, right. so go. Go. All right, so you're putting the pasta I'm on. I'm putting the pasta on. Now, we love Barilla pasta. We've decided this is the only gluten-free pasta we're ever going to eat for the rest of our lives. There. <sighs> That'll be an interesting court case, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> and OK, you... Sorry. What? I was just going to say, you've just got to agitate your pasta to make sure it doesn't stick when you... Just when you first put it I'll in... I'll agitate it. You slack! Keep going! All right, so we just put our goat's butter in there. And? Now I'm just going to add a whole bunch of washed spinach. OK. Right. So we just wilt this down, and then it's straight into our blender. OK. <gasps> right. Five minutes. Five minutes. How's the pasta? The pasta's going well. OK. What can I do? I need to touch something. Um, now oh, we'll... hang on. OK, you just talk about the bay. Can right. I throw it in you? No, you don't. Stop. Why? Well, it's just there for a joke. No, it's not. It isn't. It's don't... going in. It doesn't. And then you take it out before you whiz it. OK, there's a reason why you talk and I cook. It's because I know what I'm doing. Oh, right. OK. OK, there you are. Now, are we putting the liquid as well yes, as the we veggies? Yes, we are. OK. Yeah. Actually, while you're doing that, I'm just yeah. going to check on the pasta. OK. And the beauty of this is you use a whole bunch of spinach and there's no waste. All right, Trace? Yeah? How's the pasta? I'm just wanting to check. And that is how you know if it's done. OK. If it sticks to the wall? It's done. Yeah. Capers? Now I'll do a taste test. Ouch. A little bit of pecorino. Now, Trace? Yes, Richard. A little bit of Camp Haspy Bend olive oil. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Simply just do that and then... All right. Let's plate. OK. Could you please hold the colander up, Richard? Yes, I shall. OK. If you keep the pot there, I'll put it back on. Pop it on top? Yeah. If you whisper on television, they can still hear us. Did okay. you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. I just didn't want to be too noisy. No, it's OK. Because it's going to be too noisy. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. OK, so we've got our spinach sauce with capers and yes. pecorino. And now we're just going to plate up. And we've got some beautiful Melrose olives that have been gently drying in the oven. And they're gorgeous. Can I get the olives out? I'm just... You I'll, get the I'm olives out. I'm worried about the timer, uh, OK? Right. I'll jump over here. Oh, look at these. They're looking good, Trace. Yeah, well, they're So I'm just Melrose. going to pour this over the top. You can always pour some on later. You don't want to drench the pasta. Hang on. Oh, that'll be tasty. All right. And that's yours anyway. How does this look, Trace? That's your bowl? I know that. Yeah, you've got that special bit. Time is going to go off in a minute. OK, Trace, the yes. semi-dried tomatoes. Yes. Just... Quick, 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 Hold time. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Stop, stop. Why? Because I just want to do this. OK, keep... Quick! Quick! There we are. A little bit of pecorino. 
Can I tell you um, yeah. why we're doing this? That one morning, I said to my ex-husband, quick, I got in the kitchen, I said, quick, make love to me right now, right this minute. And he said, why? I said, just hurry up, do it right now. And he did. And afterwards, he said, what was that all about? I said, the egg timer's broken. And I just thought of that then. Is your timer ready? No, 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 no. And my eggs are overdue. Um, uh, overcooked? Yeah. Scrambled? Pasta used by date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And more of this? Um, no, because you've done no. the artistic thing. No, I'm going to do that. Can I do a swish of Campaspe Bend? Yep. OK. Wait, one Ready? more, and then... This olive's going to be beautiful. How many olives do you need? Well, you gotta... It's a contrast. OK. Food is about contrast. OK. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Pretty happy with that. I'm, I'm really scared that the timer has broken. <laughs> let, let me just pick it up and talk to it. Are you done yet? If you do, look, do oh, that. I did do that. Yeah. <laughs> It's done. Yeah, it's done. How We're about ready. that? High five. <laughs> Seven minutes. Which I don't like doing. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> right. Wow. Look, look at this colour. And it's you need a little bit. A little bit of everything on the fork. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was a really hard sentence for you to even attempt, wasn't it? There was a lot of pressure on you today, Richard. You know, you made the whole Working thing. Working with a cripple. <laughs> you know. Emotional and physical. Listen, yeah. you can't say that in 2015. I'm differently abled as we all are. We've all got a thing. So don't diss my Mine, ability. Mine's for this pasta. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Thank you, Richard. That's right. If you like this recipe, go to intolerantcooks.com.au and you can write to us and tell us how brilliant you think Richard is. I'm having the best day with you. We've had the gorgeous pasta with the green sauce. I love that green sauce. It worked out well, didn't it? Really is good. Now, as all children know, even though we've had a little, we've, we've been picking out, there's always room in your tummy for dessert. A little bit more. Yeah. So what are we making today? We're going to have some roasted brown pears. Bure bosk. Bure bosk. Yes. With these little roasted babies. with white balsamic, mm -hmm. coconut. We're going to have some beautiful rhubarb from Dai's Rhubarb Farm. Yeah, and some whipped cream cheese, which is screamingly easy. All right. Okay. So here's the exciting thing about this show, because last week we were in Nagambi at Di's Rhubarb Farm, and she gave us some beautiful rhubarb, which was fantastic. And we rushed straight home and stewed it. So a week later, we can use it in this beautiful pear dish. Right. So a little bit of coconut oil. How much are you using there, Rich? Oh, it's about 40 mil. OK. And do that. Mm, bit of a massage. Bit of a massage. Yeah. Straight onto the baking tray. Put those on. Um, I'm just going to get these into the oven, so we just need a little bit of the oh. white balsamic. So we just put a little bit in each there of that little bit of where you've taken out all the seeds and pip. Yeah. And now can I do the black pepper? You can. Now? Yeah. I've got to say, when yeah. you showed me this the first time, the whole idea of black pepper with a pear, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. It's fantastic. Yeah. Alright. And because I know that you love these so much, Trace, oh. so you slip them underneath the pear. Okay. Right. Oven. Oven. Open the door. OK, there you go, you do it. Thank you. All right. All Time right. for a bit of whipped cream. So something that people with lactose issues don't generally have, this is exciting. OK. So, Smooth and silky. Yep. A bit so, like you sometimes. Don't suck up to me. It's not very becoming. OK, so I'm going to use a whole <laughs> container so of <laughs> the Liddell's cream cheese, OK? Ooh. Just going to put the whole thing in. And look, I've mucked it up and it looks ugly. I don't care. OK, now vanilla paste. I might even use the same implement. Try to. Yeah, well, hey. OK. So, every time I use an implement, it doesn't matter whether it's a car or a dishwasher... It leaks. ...or a food processor. That's I just I'm... You just... Look, what's going on? Well... You're scared. I am I'm now. just scared that, you know, I won't muck it up. Uh -huh. Da-da-da. OK, I might okay. move it over here. Great. I'm going to start on my sugar syrup. So we've got 100 mils of rice malt syrup. Mm -hmm. Which is fantastic. Very low fructose. So look, we've got our mystery items here, which is... <laughs> Don't touch my art installation. Star anise and bay leaves. In fact, every time we show the bay leaves, I'd like some sort of beautiful, evocative, evocative music to take us to a zen place. You just threw them in there with no ceremony. OK, and 100 mils of water. We're going to boil that down and become a sugar syrup again. Okay. So that will take about 10 or 15 minutes. So while we're waiting for that to cook, let's boogie. Yeah. Look at these. 
Now, Rich, yep. they look absolutely fabulous. So for our sugar syrup, I'm mm. just going to add the juice of a fresh lime. OK, then. That's ready to go. We can okay. plate up. All right. I'd like you to put two in each plate because mm. I am going to show you something really special I've been practising. There's a thing that chefs do and they're called quenelles. It's a French thing. So That's I should be speaking in a really bad French accent. How about that? So a quenelle, it's a really sophisticated technique. It takes a lot of practice. Okay, I couldn't so master it. Just try it at home. Don't put yourself under too much pressure. If you're not as good as me, just keep trying. Basically, it's an arty dollop. It's an arty dollop. Okay, yeah. so we do this. And then we do that. See? Right. That. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Tracy. I know. Amazing. Yeah. There we are. Look, I'm just going to drop that over, yum. No, over there. That is pretty. And All right, I'm going to spoon this on first. Our sugar syrup. Finish it off with fresh lime. Mm -hmm. So, roasted beret bosque pears. Yes. With white balsamic. Mm -hmm. With a beautiful stewed rhubarb with orange and ginger. And impeccably made quenelles made from Liddell's lactose free cream cheese and cream. And a sugar syrup finished off with fresh lime and with star anise. Yeah. 2468. Boggy and don't wait. All right. Oh my god, I just got that. Mm. Oh, you know when you eat rhubarb and you get that sort of thing going on, but it's really good? It's still happening. It's that tart face. <sighs> yep. Yeah.